I've just come back from Lincolnshire. Haven't been there since the 1980s, the Wolds in particular, though I have been to Lincoln itself more recently. I did the trip economically with the help of these things, a bus pass and a senior rail card, but in doing so I haven't sacrificed quality. I would like to show you how I did the planning as well as the photographs. They, of course, are more important, but you might say, with the help of these things, I did it in style. I make great use of public transport, train and bus. I stopped driving a few years ago when, with a bit of planning, I could enjoy some exceptional deals, particularly on trains. Just sit back and relax. I have just come back from Lincoln, where I spent two nights at Louth in the Lincolnshire Worlds for £90 in a single ensuite room. The main draw was the train fare. £42.90 pence return from London to Lincoln, first class that included a cooked breakfast on the Outward Lake, dinner with wine on the return. Can't do that in a car, or, indeed, go to the loo while speeding along at 125 miles per hour. I used my bus pass to get from Lincoln to Louth. Travelled light with just the Olympus OMD EM1 Mark II and the 12 to 100 Pro lens, and the 12 to 50 as backup. I put my boots on and then went walking. Starting point King's Cross Station. I arrived early because my ticket entitled a visit to the first class lounge for coffee and nibbles. Nevertheless, I still had a bit more time to while away, so I joined the queue for platform nine and three quarters. I travelled on one of the latest Azuma trains. Uh, now, which one is mine? Ah, this is it. The seating looks right, and soon we are off and on time. As we exit the station, look towards the far right of the station before the tunnel. Those workmen are busy putting back two extra lines out of the station that were removed many years ago. Reverting to six lines into the station should help congestion, resolving the many problems of trains queuing to enter their booked platform, which happens when they arrive early. Time to choose my breakfast. Duly delivered as the train reaches Stevenage. Unfortunately, the train arrived at Lincoln on time, so I could not claim for delay repay. Oh dear. It had clouded over by the time I reached Lincoln. Not the best light for exteriors, but Whilst traversing the castle walls, the sun did make a fleeting appearance, so I captured that brief moment. A cloudy day is best for interiors, particularly for capturing detail, as the dynamic range is reduced. Whilst on the castle walls, I took a shot of the west front at full telephoto, that is, 100mm or 200 in film. It contracts the perspective. You would not believe that there are three towers, the middle one a little further back. This is a characteristic of an optical telephoto lens, which digital telephoto does not show. Upon entering the cathedral, there was a surprise. Yes, all the chairs had gone from the nave. Doesn't it make a huge difference? But there is always one 
Is he a photographer? Anyway, he adds to the composition, but are we handling the camera correctly? I made my way slowly through the cathedral. It was dark, forcing me to increase the ISO from my commercial value of 200 to 400. The screen dates from the 1330s and was illuminated by floodlight. Therefore, the warm ochre is very much as I recall it. After gazing up at the organ casing and admiring the bishop's eye made in the 1220s but rebuilt a hundred years later, I continued into the choir named after St. Hugh, who was responsible for rebuilding of the cathedral in 1192 and made a saint in 1220. Lincoln Cathedral is famous for its imp. It is in the Angel Choir, but I still had to ask. This shot is handheld at a tenth of a second at 100 mm full telephoto. Is it sharp? I then cropped the image. No sharpening. I think the image stabilization in camera and lens is very good. It is unclear why the imp is there. One legend says that he was a little devil and caused much havoc in the cathedral. So, one of the angels turned him into stone. Leaving thoughts of salvation, I strolled across the road to the castle and its Victorian prison, which has a chapel for inmates. The pews are so arranged that the prisoners can only see the preacher. He can see everyone. The dummies are very realistic. I nearly found myself talking to one. Perhaps I had better go to Specsavers. The prison has ensuite full board accommodation, but three to a cell. I'm puzzled how the inmate nearest to the camera gets to the loo in the middle of the night. It starts to rain, and walking the castle walls was not much fun, so I hopped on a stagecoach bus to Louth for my lodgings. Wednesday dawned bright and beautiful, but I could not miss a visit to St. James's Church first before visiting the Wolds, which was on the way. It has an eye-catching slender spire. At just under 300 feet, it is the tallest parish church spire in England, completed in 1499. The church interior is 15th century, but the angel roof was rebuilt in 1825. It is difficult to judge the correct exposure for a bright window in a much darker church. It generates a dynamic range difficult to capture in a single shot. I go against professed photo correctness by not using HDR. Assisted by the electronic finder in my EM1, I spot meter a value between the window and interior, favoring the interior. Neither is rendered correctly exposed, but by saving to RAW and adjusting shadows and highlights in the latest subscription release of Adobe Lightroom, I can make corrections to both extremes of exposure. It takes a bit of practice, and if you are not careful, noise can raise its ugly head which I prefer to blown out highlights in the window, which obscures colour and detail. Earlier releases of Lightroom and Photoshop, and possibly older cameras, may not offer the same flexibility when correcting the image. Furthermore, the shutter speed for this shot was a 60th of a second. A longer shutter speed can also increase the prospect of noise. My main visit was to walk the wolds, 
So, after offering a prayer in the church for good weather, I set forth on a ten-mile stroll. It is hard to imagine that this landscape existed under a tropical sea, eventually becoming the highest point between Yorkshire and Kent. These hills are gentle, its contours not unlike waves of a restless sea. It is not a lake district or Snowdonia, therefore a greater challenge for the photographer. Finding shapes and patterns is the test either natural or lines, courtesy of a diligent farmer, here leading the eye towards Louth Church. Welton Vale, previously the main entrance to South Elkington Hall, offered some diversity. Otherwise, I had to be aware of the subtle changes whilst on the move to the landscape and on the lookout for features that provided variety. South Elkington Village is soon reached, a model plan that suffers from being a cliché comprising church and pond filling a classic scene. Finally, I return to Louth at sunset. Departure day was disappointing. Heavy cloud had by now invaded the sky. A call home confirmed that it could have been much worse the heavy rain currently down south, not extending as far north as Lincolnshire, just its cloud. I enjoyed, I think, a bracing walk along the beach at Mablethorpe, but I might have felt like this chap had I stayed any longer. I resisted the temptation of ice cream, because by now I was certainly ready for dinner with wine, two glasses, on the return journey. And, if you are doubtful that we have arrived at King's Cross, now listen to the proofs. 